question for Robert. Mark Wigmore, CFRB News. Thank and, you, uh, Robert. Yes, sir. You've been here a couple times yeah. in the last few years with movies kind of outside of the box. So I guess I'm just wondering how you're feeling about the festival as a venue and, and Toronto's uh, response to your movies the last couple of years. Well, I mean, this is really different. Um, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is, is sometimes you come here and you're like, the audience really dug it. And then, like, you wonder, here's a, a light chatter at the party afterwards, and then they, like, tank your movie in the reviews three days later. Like, wow, I guess they didn't really like it. There was just a lot of people there. Or maybe, as I was saying before, I was whooping up such a storm. I thought everyone was, was with me. But um, there's something different. And, you know, Toronto's a really, really super. And I was saying this leading up to coming here. Toronto's a really smart town, and the festival goers here and the people who watch the movies are, like, uh, they're not easily phased by the usual crap so it's a really good litmus for how it's going to play generally you know and that's that's what what i like doing here question to the lady here go ahead hi me again um i guess this kind of goes back to the question of putting these two uh, actors together um since the you know the chemistry and the comedic element of it is is so important in the film did you know right from the outset that they were going to have the kind of chemistry that they did <clears throat> Um, I think that sex improv was kind of <laughs> no, we telling, didn't. wasn't it? <laughs> you don't remember that? <laughs> the thing about it is, I, you can get actors and you know what you're buying sometimes. You know, if you get certain, I won't mention names, but you know what I'm talking about. You hire someone and you watch the performance and you go, oh, okay, I knew we were going to get that. And then we bought it. That's what we got. With these guys... The fascinating thing for me was I had no idea what we were buying, just that putting the two of them together was going to work. There was going to be something interesting going on that I was going to want to watch. And I also think that each of these guys never having worked together with the other, they're very aware of the sort of lofty pedigree of the other actor coming in. So you got Val saying, well, I'm working with Robert Downey today. You know, I've got to put on my game face. And, you know, really, they sort of went at each other, you know. Maybe even a little uh, competitive edge there. And it, I think that results in the sparks that you see in the chemistry that you're describing. And you go back to that question of, you know, something to prove. Really, you know, Val and I got a couple of little like, half-assed feathers in our cap and stuff, but I think Michelle, and particularly with, with playing Harmony, it was that sense. It's, it's, like, so funny to say this, but we were doing, you know, a movie that, unlike a lot of other of Joel's other movies, where they're like, you know we want to make this movie, you know, we want to do it for this much, or this is one of those movies that, of course, we're going to make, or it's obvious we're going to make this. And they were kind of like, this, if you want to do it, that's cool. Because it's, and understandably, it didn't really fit into a usual Joel Silver movie. So there was that, you know. And then there was just this sense of goodwill as we're all kind of, like you were saying, you know, outside the box a little bit. And, uh, and again, not to say something to prove, but just the fact that she decided to continue in the industry after six weeks with us doing night shoots, I think, is, is testament to her uh, potential for longevity. No, I feel like I can do a movie with anybody now. <laughs> well, Michelle, you and I were talking, and I, I, I saw something, and you concurred, I think, that um, when you're with an actor that's like Robert, he gives you permission to do your best work, you know, that's in a way. Exactly right. I mean, I walked into this with such a supportive group of guys around me, knowing that this was kind of my first time out. And they really did give me permission to just go for it and to try whatever I wanted to creatively, which was so important for me because I was in awe. I was a little bit intimidated. And you can't really help but do the best of your ability when you are working opposite Val and Robert. I would like to apologize publicly for telling you you sucked at the reach. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At the read but I, I did suck at the read through really I badly. I nailed the read through. <laughs> he did nail the read through. Everybody forward. nailed the read through except for me. I thought, oh my God. I could just feel the energy was palpable <laughs> after the read through. And I went, oh my God, they're definitely going to fire me. And I have to start this job tomorrow. Oh my God, it was shocking. Um, and I just, you know, when you're kind of in that place where you just know you're this, you're this far down, you can only go up. I knew I could only go up the next day, so um, I made it through the next day, and Mr. Silver didn't fire me. <laughs> and, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this is really poignant. I think this might be um, the first film that, Joel, you made it through the whole movie without firing anyone, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fantastic. That's like chaos. There's only three of us. How'd you do that, Joel? 
Okay, anyway. You know what's so funny? There's I still, still feel time. like he could fire me from the movie. Like somehow they go back and just like ILM me out of it. Yeah. yeah. Or just alter you to Judd Nelson slightly. Question here. Uh, Shane, having been on the set as the screenwriter and probably thinking, what does that director know? What was it like directing for the first time? And what sort of challenges did your screenwriter give you? <laughs> um, I'd love to say that directing for the first time was a really uh, harrowing, difficult, you know, uh, threatening experience. It was. It was a breeze. It was, it was a wonderful thing. Um, you do your preparation. And if the preparation is extensive enough, and if you eat, breathe, sleep, and live the thing for six months prior to shooting, then hopefully, you know, then, then you just have to, have to remember to be flexible, and you can now because you've got this to fall back on. And given that preparation, now you can sort of play. And, you know, the greatest, three greatest actors for just sort of say, what about this, and what if I tried it after a while? You go, okay already, and there's so many ideas. Um, as far as the screenplay, you know, it's 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 great they put it on screen. It's the reward. For years, I was writing scripts and giving them away, and, and then going back to do the excruciating, backbreaking work of writing another script. It's like I was doing all this, you know, strenuous weightlifting that killed me. Just I hated doing it, and then I stayed thin, and someone else got all the muscles. You know, it's like that's not fair. It, it, whoops. And so very, basically. What it came down to. He's so I, endearing, isn't he? At some point when he's on a rant, he's either like flips the straw out of his mouth <laughs> of or knocks something over or knocks part of the set over when he's prepping you for a scene. That's Harry Lockhart right that there. Was yeah, well. The point being, go ahead. You, you want to direct because sometimes your words were not fulfilled and who screwed up your words the most? <clears throat> Whoa. This is like the controversial journalist here. <clears throat> this, is the, this is the dirt digger. Um... I don't know. Uh, I, I always screwed up at work because I always... You know there's a name in your head right now. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> you see how diplomatic he's become? Now he's a director. I take don't responsibility on my watch for anything that goes wrong. So every movie I've done that goes good or bad, I mean, if I didn't argue persuasively enough to get it done correctly, it's my fucking fault. But wait a minute. But do you mean that from... <laughs> From the very beginning when you started writing, the ambition was not to be a writer but to be a director? No, not at all. I, I, I just didn't realize that I could direct. And then I finally come to the conclusion like, uh, about two years ago that, you know, it, it's eat your vegetables and you get the dessert, you know. The, the green beans is the writing, which I hate. And then the dessert is the chance to put it on its feet as a director. That's, it's like, why didn't I think of this before? What a stupid idiot. And now that you've done it, would you go back to just script writing or never again? No, I think I'd, if I can go through the hard work of putting out a script that I enjoy or that I like, I think I'm, I now know how to put it on its feet, and that's what I'll do. I have a question.